What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brutal Planet Comics. I'm your host, Dre, the Brute Daniels. Happy Wednesday to you all, and it's Wednesday, so you know it's time to check out episode four of The Mandalorian Season 3. And as always, we're going to give the good bits up and the bad bits are down. Let's up these downs. So we kick things off. <laughs> Pretty much the entire Mandalorian Coven is doing training and shooting lasers and doing stuff. It's cool. I love seeing warriors do warrior things. In the midst of this, Grogu was playing around with some, I guess, crabs. <laughs> Need some special lotion for that. <laughs> I mean, anyway, and the foundling, or the, yeah, the foundling from episode one that had the baptism and all that stuff, he is now going to be doing a sparring with Grogu, and they're shooting like little dart, little paint darts at each other. First, Grogu's like, nah, I'm, I'm holding back. Then Din Djarin's like, let the beast go. And then he lays waste to this kid with a three dart shot. It was cool. I, th I thought it was nice. I thought it was cool. I thought it was nice. Hold up. But of course it wouldn't be <laughs> the Mandalorian without a random dinosaur coming up and scooping up your kids. <laughs> so the, the kid that almost got ate by the alligator in episode one gets snatched up by this pterodactyl and he's off to the races. So they pursue them, they're flying, they're, the jetpacks run out of fuel, and uh, uh, the house Viz, I can't, I never remember his name, he tells Din Djarin, hey, this has happened before. Say what? People keep kidnapping your kids? <laughs> you got dinosaurs and aliens keep kidnapping your children. I think it's time to move. <laughs> but anyway, this is a really cool opening scene. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the chase. I am invested. Go ahead and give it up. So... Bo Katan um, was the only one that was actually smart instead of using her jetpack, got in her ship and followed the thing and found its hideout at the top of the spire. Now, they're informed that if they use the rocket packs or anything noise around there, the joint would just kill the kid, which begs to differ why it hasn't killed already, but whatever, it's fine. So while they're doing that, Grogu goes to hang out with the armorer Glorious. and starts having flashbacks about Order 66. And this is arguably my favorite scene of this entire episode. Um, we see uh, Jedi's defending him, falling over. But then this guy shows up. God knows who he is, but he's the MVP of this show right now. He comes and saves Grogu, kills a whole bunch of clone troopers, and then meets up with Coruscant guards. Now, this scene actually makes a lot of sense to me because it's good to see that the entire planet didn't go crazy saying, oh, Jedi are the devil. Like, like, but they, like there was some sensible people being like, okay, something's not right, something's wrong. I'm meeting up with somebody to help them get out of here because what happened doesn't make any sense. I like this. I, I thought it actually made some sense. And then him and Grogu get into um, another ship and fly away. And that's the end of the flashback. And I thought that. I was invested. It was a cool uh, chase scene through our Coruscant. It was good. So after he's done with his Vietnam flashback, <laughs> he comes to and the armorer has given him the Mudhorn... Um, uh, symbol for his for his clan so this was nice i enjoyed this flashback i enjoyed seeing that there's actually a story happening with um with rescuing the kid and we get to see a little development with grogu as far as his rescue is concerned which everybody's been talking about forever up so they arrive at the spire and they start you know talking about a plan they can't use the rocket packs so they're gonna go at first light to fly to get on up there so, an interesting thing happened. So, um, Bo-Katan asked Injarn, hey, we're all about to eat. How do we do this without taking your helmet off? And they, and he tells them they all go in separate corners and then eat by themselves. It was the most bizarre thing I think I've ever seen, but, you know, cult-like behavior. What am I supposed to do with that? But Bo-Katan is the one that's leading the hunting party, so she gets to sit by the fire. Great for her, I guess. It was, it was very strange. So they start climbing, and I've got to say, visually, I really enjoyed this. You can see how practical sets are in use. I'm, I'm a sucker for that. I love seeing practical sets. They did a very good job with this. Whoever was the construction crew that did this, good job on you all. Shout out to y'all. So we get to the top of the nest. You can see that there's a graveyard here. You see a youngling helmet sitting there. I, once again, they need to move. <laughs> They need to move. Their neighbors are not 
welcoming you'll follow me but yes yeah, so i get to the top once again the construction work on this nest is done so well it's it, it, it looks real it feels real because it is real i enjoy the scenery i enjoy the sub getting to the top of this here spire going giving it up but what do you know it's a trap and there's three baby pterodactyls that were sitting there they thought they saw a heat signature and come to find out the dude from house Vizsla, it was his son the one that was taken so this now it's now the stakes are actually higher because now this character who we really don't have a whole lot of development with has a stake so it's not just a random youngling that's just gonna die but it's actually his son so he rushes into but of course the trap god knows where the mama terror doctor was hanging out at heck if i know but you know it's on and so this scene is really really cool so uh, Vizsla he flies right into the mouth of the pterodactyl because the pterodactyl has his son in its mouth he's gonna vom vomit it out which didn't chew it that was weird but whatever you know ch you're trying to avoid some child murder i guess and he flies right into the mouth so he can drop his son he goes right into his mouth and is hanging and then they all start attacking this thing they're shooting the shooting darts at it uh, uh you know tying up his wings it's a really cool scene that's very creative i i, I really i really like what they were doing with this bruh and of course there's always a bigger fish so after they finish defeating it it falls into the water and of course the crocodile alligator thingy from episode one comes and eats it because why not ha <laughs> ain't that the biggest star wars trope and so he's reunited with his son and he thanks din Djarin for his help so it was a really touching scene i really like this i really like the build-up they're doing with the clans and you know the, the, they're not just a weird cult but at the same time there's family involved and stuff like that and this is a really cool scene really good chase go ahead and giving it up so everybody comes back and they welcome the kid everybody's happy yay yay yeah that's great what then something baffling happens they go back apparently and get the three baby pterodactyls <laughs> i don't know what's going on i i guess they're gonna raise them and i don't know this is the way i don't know it was very strange i i'm pretty sure they grow up and eat you but i guess they're trying to this is gonna be the new mythosaurs or something whatever so while the during the battle both katana lost one of her shoulder pieces and so she went to the armor to get a new one and she wanted the symbol of the mythosaur um and I gotta say, this design is really good. <laughs> it's really good. So she reveals to the armor that, that she saw the mythosaur when she bathed in the waters. And of course, the myth, the, the armor is this re religious nut job. So she's just like, oh yeah, of course you'll see visions of the mythosaur. But Bogotan is like, nah, I saw that joint. And so, of course, you know, this is the way, whatever. I guess she just kind of pushed it off. But once again, it leads into, did she really see what she saw? Is this joint really real? Are they ever going to get confirmation? So this lays a little bit of mystery to it. So I enjoyed it. Even the goofiness of the pterodactyl thing. But this sets up some cool stuff. Up. So that pretty much in the episode. I enjoyed this episode very much. As you can see, nothing but ups. Um, the Order 66 scene was really cool. Um, the show on the uniting of the families was really nice. Um, the practical sets and practical use of both animation and um puppet work i noticed some puppet work that was used for the pterodactyl thing i didn't mention earlier but it was very good um i enjoyed this episode episode four gets an up from me so what do you guys think of this episode let me know in the comment section below i i enjoyed it <laughs> i enjoyed it it's way way better than last week's episode sweet jesus so that's all I really got for today. Follow me on those dope social media platforms here over there and do all those great YouTube things like comment, subscribe, and share the video. As always, you guys have been awesome, and I'll catch you all next time. Also, if you want to support my channel, uh, check out spinwiz.com or download the Spinwiz app and check out my comic series, Trouble. It was written with a lot of love and it was definitely my favorite comic series to write. I've also written it in English and in Spanish. So whatever floats your boat, I got it for you. Thanks again, and check it out.